Welcome to the 2020 Fifth Avenue Historic District Walking Tour. The Fifth Avenue Neighbors and Mahoning Valley Historical Society's History to Go program are happy to welcome you to a virtual tour of our beautiful neighborhood. Youngstown's Fifth Avenue is a quintessential example of the grand residential avenues that defined American urban development from the mid-19th century through the early 20th century. Lined with shade trees and sidewalks, these broad streets are defined by large single-family homes aligned within a continuous landscape of lawn, specimen trees, and ornamental shrubbery. The Grand Residential Avenue is typically a straight thoroughfare, fully integrated into the city's traffic grid that serves as the main artery for a surrounding residential neighborhood. It also serves as a conduit connecting various parts of the community. In this case, Fifth Avenue connects downtown Youngstown, the center of commercial activity, to the former Northside Hospital, Stambaugh Golf Course, and more importantly, the grand country homes of Liberty Township. It is a transition from a dense urban core to an idealized rural development. The fact that the development of Upper Fifth Avenue relied on the 1915 construction of a bridge over the Crandall Park Ravine, combined with the tendency to fill up lots around the park first, meant that houses only began to appear in this area around the mid-1920s. Above Bradley, then called Lauderdale Avenue, the addition of a planned median to create a true boulevard added to the prestige of the location for potential lot buyers, while the golf course view brought interest to Gypsy. In between the wars, Upper Fifth and Gypsy were among the most prestigious areas of development within the city and therefore attracted the already prosperous and the upwardly mobile, who built substantial houses here in a range of the then popular academic revival styles, as well as, in a few instances, in their own idiosyncratic tastes. 1848 Fifth Avenue. Coming in at around 4,500 square feet, this is a rather grand example of the Tudor revival. To the usual high-pitched roofs and asymmetrical composition are added a highly textured outer surface of not only brick, but stone, tile, and stucco, as well as a rather fine slate roof. The heraldic crest on the tiles to the right and the jerkin head roofs on the front gables are characteristic of medievalism. The Serliana evoking openings of the main entrance, displaying a round Roman arch and mannered keystone, hearken the Renaissance. These contrasting features suggest evolution over time of a house that was, of course, built all at once. While the interior does have some features that are quite in keeping with the style, like low-slung pointed Tudor arches, it also has a rather jazzy, if wrought iron, Art Deco main staircase. This house seems to have been built in 1929, but is apparently listed as vacant. This may suggest a house built on spec or as a model home. The 1940 census shows William M. Neckerman, a 65-year-old Pennsylvanian-born steel mill executive, his 51-year-old Ohioan wife, Florence, and their 29-year-old son, William, in the house. Neckerman was born in Pittsburgh and was the son of two German immigrants. His wife, Florence's maiden name was Keeling, and she was from Youngstown. He worked for various places in Pennsylvania before coming to Youngstown in 1907 to be the chief engineer of Youngstown Sheet and Tube. 1868 Fifth Avenue. This arts and crafts bungalow is the smallest house on this end of Fifth Avenue. Its broken up massing, round headed door, arched door hood, and overall cottage appearance relate more to the English origins of the arts and crafts movement rather than the streamlined form typical of the American bungalow. This was the house of Harry C. Walter and his wife, Elva. Harry C. Walter was a native of Youngstown. His wife, Miss Elva Webb, was from Mercer, PA. He operated a retail flower operation and was a prominent local florist. In 1912, he opened his own shop at West Wood Street. He bought fresh flowers on the open market and was always ready for any customer. His motto was, say it with flowers. In the 1930 census, Harry was 40 years old and Elva was 41. 
The Walthers had moved into this house by 1924, making them, along with John W. Smith, two blocks further north, the first inhabitants of Fifth Avenue, north of Todd Lane. 2224 Fifth Avenue. The symmetry, pedimented porch, and side lights of this house affiliate it with the Colonial Revival. The gambrel roof and shed monitor for the upper story windows would have been emblematic of the Dutch colonial style in the early 20th century. William J. Morris, vice president of Youngstown Sheet and Tube, had this house built circa 1925-26. Morris was born in Hubbard. William graduated from the Rayan School and worked at Commercial National Bank and the GM McKelvey Company before joining Youngstown Sheet and Tube in 1905. He married Alice Troutman from Pittsburgh, who passed away in 1924 before this house had been completed. They had one daughter named Mary Barbara. In the 1930 census, the 48-year-old widower, William, and his 12-year-old daughter are living in this house with a 40-year-old New York-born housekeeper named Mary A. Schofield, and two younger maidservants, both American-born of Czechoslovakian parentage, Elizabeth Patrinchik, age 24, and Helen Smetanovsky, age 20. 2268 Fifth Avenue. The high-pitched hip roofs, corner coins, and vertical fenestration mimicking French windows indicate the chateauesque style of this house. As often was the case with patrons using this style, it may not refer strictly to the owner's personal heritage, but rather a connection with, or aspiration to, sophisticated old world tastes. Myron Israel Arms III, son of Warner and Fanny Wick Arms, built this house circa 1926. Myron I. Arms was the president of Aetna Standard Engineering Company. He lived in the house with his wife, Minnesota-born Margaret Powell Robinson. In 1930, they were living in the house with their son Warner, age 17, son Charles S., age 15, and daughter Margaret S., age 10. Along with the family were two African-American servants, Fossey Williamson, age 26, who was born in Florida to parents from Alabama, and Perrion Alexander, age 32, a South Carolinian houseman who was a veteran of the First World War. 2272 Fifth Avenue. This house is buff masonry with corner coins, terracotta tiled roof, balcony and front arcade are all clearly invocative of the Mediterranean style. The ironwork and bosses in the spandrels of the arches, as well as the house's somewhat more vertical composition, may suggest an intent to emulate the Italian Renaissance. This house was built in 1927, but it is listed as vacant in the city directory, so there is a possibility it was built speculatively. The house was inhabited briefly by George R. Clegg and his wife Florence. Clegg was the president and treasurer of the Clegg Franklin Company, which dealt in Franklin automobiles at 1848-1850 Wick Avenue. 2304 Fifth Avenue. This house is one of Youngstown's finest examples of the Tudor revival. Characteristics of the style on the exterior include blended materials such as brick, stone, and half timbering, and a variant of half timbering where bricks are used between the wood rather than plaster. This is called brick nogging. The long left wing of the facade contains the equivalent of a medieval great hall below and a master bedroom above. Details in wood and wrought iron are of the highest quality found in the city and there is even a poetic stained glass window depicting a bird in the front door. This house was built by Thomas W. Lloyd around 1928. He and his wife Margaret moved there at that time. Thomas W. Lloyd was originally a partner in his father's livery stable business. W. D. Lloyd & Son at 452 West Federal. Lloyd became one of the five incorporators of the George B. Sennett Company in Youngstown, who were manufacturers of engines, machinery, forgings, and castings of all kinds. The 1930 census indicates Thomas W. Lloyd, age 55, lived here with his wife Margaret C., also 55, and a servant, Anna Vrabel. Lloyd was born in Ohio, though his father was from Wales and his mother was from New York. 
Margaret Lloyd was also born in Ohio, but her parents were from Ireland. The interior of the house features distinctive custom features relating to the couple for which it was intended. The ground floor is very masculine and features fine reproductions of Tudor wood carving, replete with Tudor roses. This was undoubtedly meant to make a connection with Lloyd's Welsh heritage. On the other hand, the wrought iron staircase balusters feature shamrocks, which clearly were meant to relate to Margaret's Irish background. 2348 Fifth Avenue. Barton E. Brook, who moved to Youngstown to be the architect for Youngstown Sheet and Tube, designed this colonial revival house. The gabled ended roof, the overall symmetry of the main block of the house, the Tuscan etiquette door surround, the transom over the front door, the balustrade over the door, and the Sirliana window over it all make this a textbook example of the style. Undoubtedly, the style here is meant to speak of the builder's old New England roots and his patriotism. This house was built circa 1929-30 for George Kerwin Brainerd, the president of General Fireproofing Company, and his wife, Alice Maud Littlefield of Maine. George C. Brainerd is also chairman of the board of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, a director of Youngstown Sheet and Tube Company, Youngstown Municipal Railway, and Youngstown and Ashtabula Railroad. The 1930 census shows George and Alice living in the house with daughter Barbara, son George Jr., daughter Elizabeth, and son Edward. They also have two PA-born maids, Alice Kane, age 39, and Anna Chris, age 20. Twenty-two sixty-one Fifth Avenue. This house fits firmly within the colonial revival style with its gabled ended roof, overall symmetry, and classical front door surround with side lights. The portico once had a somewhat more Baroque effect as it has lost two Corinthian columns in the round in front of the inner pilasters. This style was usually meant to signal old heritage in this country, used by recent immigrants. Whether this is to display affinity with their newfound country or whether it is simply a reflection of classical tastes and restraint is not clear. This is the house of Dora and Joseph Schwabel of the Schwabel Baking Company. The house was built circa 1925. Joseph, also known as Meyer Joseph Schwabel, was born in 1882 in Probuzna, now the Ukraine, but then part of Austro-Hungarian Empire. Dora Goldberg was born in 1888 in Buksas, now the Ukraine, but previously also Austro-Hungary. They would meet and marry in Youngstown in 1905. The Jewish immigrants founded a baking company which is still in existence and distributing bread across the country today. Joseph only lived in his new house for a few years before he died in 1928. Dora soldiered on as the head of the family baking company. In the 1930 census, Dora presides as head of a bustling five-bedroom household containing sons Samuel, Irving, and David, and daughters Frances, Sadie, and Elaine. Living with them was their Poland-born cousin, Dora Dlugach, age 31, and designated as the housekeeper. There's also an additional maidservant, Mary Rusnak, born in Pennsylvania of Czechoslovakian parents. 1860 Fifth Avenue. This Tudor Revival House adds specifically replicated characteristics from the half timbering on the right side to the typical asymmetrical form, slate high-pitched roof, and diverse exterior materials. The interior is consistent with the style, particularly with its stone Tudor arched fireplace surrounds. This house seems to have been built circa 1928 for Alfred O. Stewart, the chief clerk, secretary, and treasurer of First National Bank. In 1930, Alfred Stewart is listed as a 54-year-old first-generation American. His parents were born in Northern Ireland. He lived with his Ohio-born wife, Mary, 51 years old and of Scottish parentage, and their 22-year-old son, David, and 19-year-old daughter, Mary. Living with them was their 24-year-old African-American maidservant, Carrie Harper, who was born in West Virginia and whose parents were born in South Carolina. This house was sold to steel executive Henry A. Reamer, who lived there in 1935 
and then by 1940 to William McDonald. McDonald was 50 years old, born in Illinois, and worked as the comptroller of Youngstown Sheet and Tube. He lived with his 40-year-old Pennsylvania-born wife, Marie, their 14-year-old daughter, Mary Ann, and 36-year-old maidservant, Mary O'Connell. Twenty two thirteen Fifth Avenue. This fine example of the colonial revival features an elegant Georgian front door surround with attenuated ionic columns supporting an entablature. Above sits the large stairwell window flanked by volutes and capped by a pediment. This is a 1927 house built for Dr. Robert Gillis Mossman. Dr. Mossman worked in internal medicine and had an office in the Central Tower in downtown Youngstown. He was born in Greenville, Pennsylvania. In 1913, he married Rebecca Melissa Ziegler in Columbiana. Mossman had attended the University of Pennsylvania and served as a first lieutenant in the hospital branch of the Marine Corps during World War I. Both the 1930 and 1940 censuses show the house inhabited by Dr. Mossman, wife Rebecca, their son Robert Jr., Rebecca's mother Rose Ziegler, and Dr. Mossman's maiden aunt, Emma Donaghy. Thank you for joining us for the 2020 Historic District Walking Tour. We hope you enjoyed yourselves. Next year, hopefully we can do this in person. <music>